As we begin the new year, our military forces are poised around the world, ready to meet any threat. Specific to the Persian Gulf, the flow of forces to the region continues. We've seen a few units depart for the Gulf and can expect that, that that deliberate force flow to continue. And while there has been no decision about Iraq, uh, we want to ensure that we are prepared to provide the President as much flexibility as possible. Yesterday, we saw tens of thousands of demonstrators uh, converge on Washington. They say we should not go to war against Iraq. I would just like to ask you this morning, what do you say to those people? What I would say to them is that uh, the president is trying every means not to go to war, but the decision to go to war is in the hands of Saddam Hussein. Well, uh, Mr. Blix has said that it may take several months more to make to come to some sort of definitive conclusion about whether he has disarmed it or not. Uh, president Chirac of France said yesterday, and these are his words, wisdom requires that we grant the inspector's request for more time. What we have to make a judgment on now is whether or not Saddam Hussein is serious about disarming. And is he cooperating with the inspectors in that disarmament process? So just to make sure I understand what you're saying, you're saying a lack of cooperation would be reason enough to take military action. What I'm saying is that the Iraq has an obligation under 1441 and earlier resolutions to disarm. And one way to demonstrate that they are disarmed or are going to disarm is to cooperate with the inspectors and help the inspectors do their job. Time is running out. What should the public know right now about what a war with Iraq would look like and what the cost would be? Cost in dollars or cost dollars in Dollars in human costs. Mm -hmm. Well, the lesser important is the cost in dollars. Uh, human life is, is a treasure. Um, Office of Management and Budget estimated it would be something under $50 billion. How Outside much estimates say up to $300 billion. Ugh, baloney. Almost three months ago, the United Nations Security Council gave Saddam Hussein his final chance to disarm. He has shown instead utter contempt for the United Nations and for the opinion of the world. The 108 UN inspectors were sent to conduct were not sent to conduct a scavenger hunt for hidden materials across a country the size of California. The job of the inspectors is to verify that Iraq's regime is disarming. It is up to Iraq to show exactly where it is hiding its banned weapons, lay those weapons out for the world to see, and destroy them as directed. Nothing like this has happened. The United Nations concluded in 1999 that Saddam Hussein had biological weapons sufficient to produce over 25,000 liters of anthrax, enough doses to kill several million people. The United Nations concluded that Saddam Hussein had material sufficient to produce more than 38,000 liters of botulinum toxin enough to subject millions of people to death by respiratory failure. The British government has learned that Saddam Hussein recently sought significant quantities of uranium from Africa. Our intelligence sources tell us that he has attempted to purchase high-strength aluminum tubes suitable for nuclear weapons production. The dictator of Iraq is not disarming. To the contrary, he is deceiving Intelligence sources indicate that Saddam Hussein has ordered that scientists who cooperate with UN inspectors in disarming Iraq will be killed along with their families. International human rights groups have cataloged other methods used in the torture chambers of Iraq. Electric shock, burning with hot irons, dripping acid on the skin, mutilation with electric drills, cutting out tongues, and rape. If this is not evil, then evil has no meaning. Before September the 11th, many in the world believed that Saddam Hussein could be contained. But chemical agents, lethal viruses, and shadowy terrorist networks are not easily contained. Imagine those 19 hijackers with other weapons and other plans 
this time armed by Saddam Hussein. Take one vial, one canister, one crate, slip into this country to bring a day of horror like none we have ever known. We will do everything in our power to make sure that that day never comes. One of the most worrisome things that emerges from the thick intelligence file we have on Iraq's biological weapons is the existence of mobile production facilities used to make biological agents. We have diagrammed what our sources reported about these mobile facilities. Here you see both truck and rail car mounted mobile factories. As these drawings based on their description show, we know what the fermenters look like. We know what the tanks, pumps, compressors, and other parts look like. We know how they fit together. We know how they work. And we know a great deal about the platforms on which they are mounted. We know from Iraq's past admissions that it has successfully weaponized not only anthrax, but also other biological agents, including botulinum toxin, aflatoxin, and ricin. Saddam Hussein has investigated dozens of biological agents, causing diseases such as gas, gangrene, plague, typhus, tetanus, cholera, camelpox, and hemorrhagic fever. And he also has the wherewithal to develop smallpox. In May 2002, our satellites photographed the unusual activity in this picture. Here we see cargo vehicles accompanied by a decontamination vehicle associated with biological or chemical weapons activity. This photograph of the site, taken two months later in July, shows that this previous site, as well as all of the other sites around the site, have been fully bulldozed and graded in order to conceal chemical weapons evidence that would be there from years of chemical weapons activity. Saddam Hussein is determined to get his hands on a nuclear bomb. He is so determined that he has made repeated covert attempts to acquire high specification aluminum tubes from 11 different countries, even after inspections resumed. It goes on and on and on. Clearly, Saddam Hussein and his regime will stop at nothing until something stops him. <laughs>